stop. We can just take it. Okay. So I fumbled. And when I say I fumbled, I mean I fumbled big time. Right on the goal line. When I really needed it the most, I fumbled the worst. I was sitting with a group of strategic advisors who were gathered to help me look at my brand, look at what I do, and help me gain uh, more visibility and more transparency, more credibility in the world. And there were about six people around the room. They all had different strategic expertise, and they were looking at my stuff, looking at my brand, sort of like going to the doctor and getting an exam. And one guy said, you know, I really don't know you, Dave, but what is this tribal alchemy thing? What is that? Can you just tell me a little bit about that? So I opened up my computer, and he said, oh, no, 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 I don't want to see anything. I don't want to see any graphs. I don't want, I just want you to tell me in two sentences, what's tribal alchemy? And so I started talking. And I started talking a little bit more. And I talked a little bit more. And you know that moment where you're talking and you kind of feel like maybe this is what's happening to you? Uh, <laughs> where the words are coming out, but the more the words come out, the more you get the blank stares from the people listening to you. And you can't tell if they're not understanding you or they just want to leave. But either way, it doesn't feel good. And so I kept pulling words out of my mouth and they were dropping on the table. And when I was done, when I finally decided I really need to stop, the guy looked at me and said, well, let me tell you, the first thing you're going to have to do is figure out how to talk about what you're passionate about. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me tell you why that was so bad. I had already spent 10 years of my life doing in-the-field research on the elements of tribal alchemy. I had already spoken about tribal alchemy all over the country, in different parts of the world. I had done a whole PhD dissertation with tribal alchemy at the, at the center. I was writing a book on tribal alchemy, but when someone wanted me to simply tell them in one or two sentences, what is tribal alchemy, I couldn't do it. Have you ever been there? Please someone tell me you've been there. Right? What does that feel like? Give me some words. You, you picked out the right word. It sucks. It does. I thought Sorry. you were going to say fuck. But... Warm, warm dog shit. Huh? Warm dog shit. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. Anybody else? Yeah. S sweating. Sweating. Yeah. You can just feel. You know, you just kind of feel the failure rising. It's humiliating. Right? It is. It's humiliating. Must be a VC. He didn't get it. Well, he did not get it. I, on the other hand, went back to do some more homework, which I'm going to share with you tonight. Because I had spoken about tribal alchemy for a number of years, but I was not able in that moment to articulate it in what we might call the elevator pitch. Right. right. But there's another kind of pitch we also want to talk about tonight, and that's that 10 to 20 minute pitch that happens here a lot where you get a little bit more time, and the way you pitch makes all the difference in the world. In fact, don't just take my example, or, or my, my way of thinking about it, or even your own experience about it. Consider this piece of research on pitching. So a group of researchers from uh, three different uh, universities in the country, all business uh, professors, looked at the art of pitching. And they looked at what entrepreneurs are really after. What, what do you need when you pitch? What are you hoping to get? And how do you gain that quickly with an audience of investors? And what they decided was they wanted to look at the pitch and see if that created any difference in how much funding a particular entrepreneur might get. Was there a correlation between pitching and funding? And they started this by, first of all, describing what every entrepreneur, especially when you're lacking credibility, you don't, nobody knows you, nobody knows your idea, your idea is not tested, you're just there with very little credibility with an idea that you're passionate about but nobody else knows about. Anybody been there? Right. Yeah. right? Many, anybody there right now? Right now. Right? So what these researchers said is, 
The first thing that every entrepreneur needs when they're pitching is to somehow gain legitimacy. You've got to gain legitimacy. And in fact, they went a step further, they called it cognitive legitimacy. And basically, the way they described this was, legitimacy happens when you are taken for granted. And what they meant by that was, nobody any longer, when they go to Google, wonders if it's going to work. <laughs> you don't go to Google to search something thinking, oh god, I hope it works, I hope it works, I hope it works. You just now take it for granted that it's going to work. If I'm a good speaker, and people have heard me speak before, and you bumped into them on the way up, and you said, I'm going to hear this Dave Fleming, and I had legitimacy with them, they would say, oh man, that's going to be great. If I didn't, or if my legitimacy was in the tank, they might say, is there anything else you could do tonight? Because I'm not sure you really want to go. Don't, don't go. Legitimacy is the key when you don't have credibility, nobody knows you, nobody gets your idea yet, and you're sitting in front of a group of investors, what you need, these researchers have identified, is legitimacy. So, how do you get that? How do you get that? Well, what they also described was the fact that you can't take legitimacy. It can only be given to you. Do you agree with that? Yes. You can't make someone think you're legitimate. I actually dated a lot of women where that was the case, but where I wanted them to, you know, but they didn't take me in a legitimate way, so that was the end of that relationship. But the reality is you can't be legitimate, you have to be, it has to be bestowed on you. And again, when you're an entrepreneur, you don't have a lot of goods to offer. And so these researchers identified one of the most important things, and that is your attention. The place to get legitimacy first and fast is in your pitch. And they, so they, they wanted to know something. Does preparedness, come on, how's the, it's not working. Does preparedness of a pitch, like how well prepared you are, how well you know your stuff, how well you can deliver that on the spot, does that increase legitimacy? Yeah, if you're absolutely. really, and this is what they wanted to know, right? We kind of common sense know, but they wanted to test this. They wanted to research this. Then they wanted to know if legitimacy would lead to increased funding. This thing is not, let me just turn this so maybe. If legitimacy would lead to increased funding. So here's what they did. They came up with a scale for preparedness. What are the things that it really looks like for an entrepreneur to be prepared when they're pitching? They also came up with a scale that already existed around what do people do and think and act and talk like when they are bestowing legitimacy on another person. Then they watched 113 episodes of Shark Tank. <laughs> okay? And Dragon's Den. I've not heard of Dragon's Den. Has anybody heard of that? Yeah. So I've not seen that one, but they watched, between the two, they watched 113 episodes and graded them to the two scales of are they prepared when they pitch and did they get legitimacy bestowed on them? What they discovered was that the more prepared an entrepreneur was when they were pitching, the more confident they were, but not cocky, but confident in their ability to articulate their world, the more legitimacy was bestowed. And the more legitimacy was bestowed, the more funding was increased. It, it does, it, sometimes, you know, we, we know these things by common sense, but this was a really powerful study to show that, look, this is your doorway in. This is your doorway into legitimacy, how well you can pitch. You might think you have a great product, but that at first doesn't matter. That is not where your legitimacy lies. So after they did this study, they wrote this. They said, the results reveal that entrepreneurs who show clear signs of preparedness and a strong handle on their material created credibility with investors and received more funding. And look regardless of the project. It didn't matter what the project was. The projects were all over the map. 
But what increased funding was their ability to articulate it. Stated differently, this is what I really want you to remember. Without a good pitch, resources will likely not be forthcoming. Your pitch cannot be an afterthought. It can't be an afterthought. In fact, that's really the first thing I want to say tonight that I've learned in my world of pitching many things, biting it bad sometimes, and really actually winning pretty big others. I'll share a story at the end where I, I had five minutes to pitch something, and I made $400,000 over four years because of it. So pitching matters. And the first piece of advice that I want to say to you is this. Never be satisfied with your current pitch. Never. You can never rest that your pitch is done. The dreaded words are, I got this. As soon as you are there living in your head, your pitch is going to start to go stale. So I started to think about, how do I talk about tribal alchemy? What does that mean? Because it was a fair question. We don't even use those words all that often in everyday conversation, but we never link them together. So what in the world is that? It was a fair question. Can you tell me about that? And I meandered around. But now I can say it in seven words. Tribal alchemy is a collective ingenuity framework. Now if I only have now if I only have if I only have seven words, that's all you get. But if you'll give me a few more words, then I say tribal alchemy is a collective ingenuity framework that teaches people how to take what they have, the resources they have, and turn them into the resources they need in order to overcome challenges and seize opportunities. Now, if you give me just a little bit more time, <laughs> then I would say, when you and a group of people share a passion for a mission, and you start working on that mission together, you start acting together, you become a tribe. Now, inevitably, your tribe, as it pursues its mission, is going to hit challenges and opportunities. Can I get an amen? Okay. Amen. The most ingenious tribes are the ones that can take their resources, the ones they have, not the ones they wish they had, but the ones they have, and turn them into what they need. And that is tribal alchemy. Damn it, I could not say that that day. But let me tell you, three weeks later, I could say it, and I could say it, and I could say it, and I'm still refining it. Maybe it still has a long way to go. But you ask me, what do you mean, boo-hoo? <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'm too you. So, okay. so, let me ask you, what was your thought process when you, when you went from, okay, I talked to, and then you came back a few years later? How did you form it? Great, great question, and I'll get there. Okay, Some of the things we'll talk about, we'll, we'll hit that. If you don't want me to say a word, then this is how I go and show you what tribal alchemy is. So you can teach me how to build houses. <laughs> Go with the metaphor. Go with the metaphor. You teach me how to use tools to, to build a house. That, that is exactly right. How does a group of people take what they have and they do something to turn it into what they need? Right. Right. So, so never stop refining your pitch. Never stop refining your pitch. It is. It is the heart of your ability to quickly gain legitimacy. Don't think your product or service is going to legitimize you. Nobody at first cares at all about that. That is not where your legitimacy source is going to come from. It's going to come from your ability to articulate what matters about that product or service and do it in a very specific way. So, some of the things that are important around that, after just always refining, always refining, then remember this, your pitch tells people something about you. It is not just your product or service, it's something about you. Look, if I would have been that strategic advisor, well, let me ask you. If you would have been that strategic advisor, and I was you know, pulling words out of my mouth, and they were just landing, and you were just getting more confused, 
What might you have thought about me? You can't deliver me. Oh, wait, you just don't quite, I don't know about this. Anything else? No idea what he's talking about. Yeah. Don't have your act together. I don't have my act together. Academic. Ah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. I was in a, a, a Shark Tank um, a couple years ago where someone was pitching to a group of investors and they said something very dramatic with a statistic attached to it. And I was. And I was. And I was. And I was.